We're on a journey right now to rescue the captain. If I get swept out or anything, oh, you're gonna send the distress call? They don't look like pirates. chef spend the day with me as a chef on a yacht. I'm not much of a morning person so it takes a cup of coffee or two to wake me up. I make sure to wake up before all of the guests do that way I'm ready to make lattes, cappuccinos, and prep their breakfast. For breakfast this morning I'm making a frittata with sweet peppers, goat cheese, and spinach. Frittatas are an awesome make-ahead breakfast. If I know the guests have an early morning plan for the next day I'll go ahead and bake off a frittata the night before. So for when I wake up, I can just pop it in the oven and reheat it. For this job, I work by this motto. Work smarter, not harder. So instead of using a bowl to mix everything together, I'm just mixing the frittata in the pan that I'm going to bake it in. Eggs go in, all of your toppings, some oil, and for the key to a fluffy frittata, add a good amount of milk. Throw my frittata into the oven and let it cook for about 20 minutes. Now, breakfast is probably the trickiest meal of the day. Guests are all waking up at different times. Some are hungry, some aren't hungry, some like a snack at 10 a.m. I've gotten very good at being flexible and just reading the room. Since this is my third year with the same family, I can read them pretty well now. I know their likes, dislikes, and that makes it a lot easier on me to cook food that they enjoy. I got a bachelor's degree in food service management and my first job was at Walt Disney World. Both of these things gave me great perspective of what the hospitality industry is all about. The guest is always right. And I firmly believe that. I get a lot of questions from you guys if I get frustrated if the guest changes meal plans. Maybe they want to switch the time for lunch, having some of the guests eat at 8 a.m. and the other half eat at 10 a.m., or just not being in the mood for what I'm cooking. And my answer is no, I don't get frustrated at all. The guest is always right, remember? My job is to be flexible, cook great food, and try to fulfill any guest request. So today, the guest told me that they were going out on the boat and they needed sandwiches to be packed. One requested gluten-free, another Ezekiel bread, and the rest Hawaiian rolls. Now, I know what you're going to say. Sandwiches on a yacht does not seem fancy enough. These guests are just like me and you. When we go on the beach, don't you just want to sink your teeth into a nice sandwich? So when the guests go out on day trips, they always suggest sandwiches. The guests just woke up, so I served them their coffee and breakfast. I made sure to make some extra frittata for the crew as well. And we'll eat all of our meals up in the bridge. The first mate loaded the cooler with some ice, and I packed in the sandwiches and some snacks. The guests finished with breakfast, so I cleaned up the dishes, and then popped some bubbly for some mimosas. They're about to leave on the tender, so we packed the mimosas in to-go cups. I watered my basil plants and then headed to the fuel dock to fill up. So the first mate, Brian, will step off the boat and untie us from our slip. And it's just a short way over to the fuel dock. But we have to go through the same process of tying up to the dock. My job responsibility when we're docking is to be on the bow line. I'll toss the bow line to the guy on the fuel dock, then we'll get stern line and then the spring lines. The spring lines are in the center of the boat and they keep us from moving forward and backwards. They taught me these cool knots and how to tie us off so I can be a little bit of help. So you know when you're fueling your car, it probably takes about five minutes to fill up. If we're filling up a full 3000 gallon tank, it takes about five hours. Today we're only getting 500 gallons because the tank is running slow for some reason. The cost for diesel here at Norman's Key is running you about $6.17. We put the diaper down to keep the teak nice and clean, just in case we have a spill, and run the hose to the boat. Keep going past the wall. The high speed one? Yeah. Why don't we, why don't we oh. do that? We're going to 
gonna be here until lunchtime. That one has a little self thing, nice. I took a turn watching to make sure everything was going well and then Gina took over for me. Do you need to switch? Do you need Gina for any reason? I took this time to go through my inventory and I saw that my bean sprouts were going bad so I had to toss them. These bean sprouts, even on provisioning day, looked iffy, so it's very rare that we're throwing food out. I hate wasting food. But these are inedible. Also saw that the fridge was out of almond milk, so I ran downstairs to get a replacement. For one of the owners, I make her lattes with almond milk, so we keep a ton on board. On provisioning day, I ran out of storage in the galley, so I found a spot down here by the guest rooms. It's a little hidden closet where I keep some of my inventory. I'll just grab one of the almond milks and bring it up to the fridge. We still had a ton more time left of fueling, so I started making some chocolate chip cookies for the crew. Look what I'm making you. Oh, cookies. Nice. <laughs> Captain's cookies for tonight. Hopped off the boat onto the fuel dock to check to see where we were at. Guess how many gallons of gas we already have? 350. Hey, good guess. No. 370. Did Mark tell you? He said we're getting 500 and we're in 300 right now. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, wow. That's impressive. Is that 500? Almost. Yeah. Four more gallons. Seventeen a gallon. Well, we got a discount. We got a different. discount. Well, this one is saying six thirty-three. Because it's fast pumping, maybe. Someone got four gallons and paid twenty-five cents. Mm. Three thousand eighty-five dollars and six cents for five hundred gallons. And it was a slow pump. Yeah, we usually get yeah. that fast. I'm back on the bow line because we're coming off the fuel dock and headed to Staniel Key. shoots. I made sure everything in my galley was stowed away and headed back outside to help Gina with the lines. Okay. So I already unloosened the air on that one, so it just needs to be untied off the wall and then Mm -hmm. to the side because we'll use the wrapped around later. 
I see. Okay. Do you tie it or you just wrap it around? I did a little tie at the end, kind of back and forth. Okay. You would still have to untie that. It's just so that we can have. Gotcha. Okay. Turn it and then, it's uh, and then whenever you're done rolling them and all the air is out, it's good to go ahead and turn them that way. That way, when it's time to put air in, it doesn't come right back out. I didn't do it on that one. You can if you want to go do it. But okay. so this one's ready to go. All right. and then right back into the galley where I belong. The butter was perfectly soft and ready to be mixed. Well, maybe the butter wasn't soft enough because I actually burned the motor on this hand mixer. First time using it and she's gone. I like to make big batches of cookie dough because cookie dough freezes beautifully. I'll wrap them into little cylindrical shapes and freeze them. We made it to Staniel Key. Captain is up in the bridge right now trying to find the perfect spot to anchor. Thurston is happy to see land as well. He has been on this boat for five hours and he kind of has to pee. So if you can see, Mark has his foot on this little button and that's how he's controlling the anchor. Yeah, because we were paddle boarding to the island last time. That boat was just enormous. And while Captain Mark is controlling the anchors, he's talking to Gina and she's using the remote. It's just, just controls the thrust. Now I've got thrusters here. Mm -hmm. We can drive forward. Oh. Can drive the Mount Key Resort, this is Lyndon. Back thrusters. Lyndon, Lyndon, this is Paul Key. let's go to one four. Captain Mark set the anchors and we're just making sure we're not slipping. Everything looks good, so we're taking the second tender off the boat. This tender sits on top of the swim platform, which is on a hydraulic system, so it can go up and down. We can raise him right up, chop him up for dinner. Oh yeah! This is the boat that we use to get to and from the island. Okay. And how we take out Thurston. So the first thing Mark did when we got here was take out the dog to the island. Everything was going great until we get a radio call from Captain Mark. The tender engine filled with water and he couldn't get it moving. So I went on a rescue mission. I don't even know how the captain and the, and the dog is gonna fit in here. I'm gonna get stranded on the island. We're on a journey right now to rescue the captain. Abby's coming in the, uh, the kayak. See ya. If I get swept out or anything, what do what do I do? Oh, you're gonna send the distress call? Okay. There are people on a boat that I can see with a dinghy just floating there. Should I ask them? That's up to her. They don't look like pirates. What's the name of the boat when you see it? Is this, it's this one that's to the left of me right now. Thank you so much, sir. We have a nice guy. Nice guy from a sailboat lowering down his dinghy. 
going to go get Mark at the island on his little thingy. And now we got to get back to the boat. The wind getting there was horrible. Um, my arms are a little tired, but at least I got the wind coming back. I see him. He just left his boat. Yeah, come back. I got a moment, I'm coming. Did you let Hi Ho Silver know? Yeah. I know. I passed him. I said, I can't stop, buddy. I got to go on. We should give him a cupcake tonight or something. Fuck, it's full of water again, like last year. I couldn't get the filters off. So I made a filter wrench out of my fing belt to the filter off the motor. Then I couldn't get the big filter off. So I made a bigger filter wrench and got the filter off. Kept dumping it out up there. Kept dumping it out, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up with the ball, dump it out water. Water, water. And he jumped off, then he ran into the sand spurs. I got no shoes, I gotta go in the sand spurs and get them. Ah, uh, there's. It's an adventure. Yikes. Is it something that can be fixed? Yeah, I just gotta keep draining the tank. Change this water fuel separator, I think I have them in Salty Dog. I, I dumped the whole water fuel separator out in the water, and it was water. There was no gas on the, on the surface. Like, I Were you gopro it the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the emergency mission. <laughs> Look at his bloody, bloody arm. Those pair of pliers you were bringing. I got a pair of channel locks, is what I really need. Otherwise, I gotta pull my belt out. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are good. I don't need the rest of them. Okay. None of this? Mm -mm. Distress mission complete. That was a fun little adventure. Let's get back into the galley and start prepping for cocktail hour. I made a little tomato, basil, and mozzarella salad, sliced pineapple and nuts, and some cheese and meats. Changed into our outfits for dinner service. And with the rest of the pineapple, it's going into the creamy. It tastes just like a Dole Whip. I'll start dinner prep by cutting up some yellow squash that I'll be using to make a squash souffle. Hungarian chicken with squash souffle. Plates? Are you going to plate it? Yes, I will plate it. Knives and forks. Yeah. No spoons. The squash souffle is super simple. Milk, eggs, cheese, salt and pepper, and herbs. I'm going with goat cheese and Parmesan cheese. Adding goat cheese makes anything fancy. Oh, and almost forgot, melted butter goes in as well. Now on to Hungarian chicken. 
I season it with salt, pepper, smoked paprika, regular paprika, and hot Hungarian paprika. I get a good hard sear on the outside and then I'll add tomato sauce. I normally add chicken stock as well, but I don't have the space to hold cartons of chicken stock. So I use a concentrated bouillon base and just mix it with water. Oh, I'm part of the team tonight. And then you go. There you go, chicken stuff. Three minutes. Three minutes from now. For the starter tonight, I'm plating up a spinach salad topped with strawberries, walnuts, green onions, and Parmesan crisp. What? What, what about this? You don't like it? <laughs> Too much salad for you, Mark? What's in there? It's cheese. Oh, no. It's Parmesan stress. Dinner tonight is on the upper deck, so let's head up there. While the guests are working on their salads, I'll plate up the main course. And then Brian, the first mate, decided to swim with sharks. Yeah. 